On page 500, it talks about user interface macros. Now, the rest of the book starts call, calls them UI macros. So just remember that UI macro is a user interface macro. All right. Now, go ahead. If you'll see on page 501, it shows you what we're going to use these macros to pull up. The very first thing we have to do is go to page 504 and create two data sheet forms. So, with that being said, page 504, number one, you want your navigation panel open. Select the customer table one time. You have to have something selected in here to make a data sheet. Then uh, choose data sheet from more forms. All right, so now we have our customer data sheet and we're going to save the form using the name customer. So we'll just hit a straight save. All right, and customer. All right, excellent. Then we're gonna do the same thing for the book rep table. So close this, click on book rep, go to create more forms data sheet. Excellent. Hit save. And this is going to be called a book rep. And we can close that. Now, you think we've done nothing, but you have. You made a form. Alright. So here's the book rep form that we just made. Alright. Here's a customer form that we just made. All right, so yes, you did something, even though it didn't look like it. All right, close both forms, and then open the customer customer form, so double click, and close the navigation pane. Now, click on the CU number, and it selects that entire column. Now, we want to make sure that we show the property sheet. So click on property sheet. Excellent. And this time we're going to use the event tab. So we don't have to look around quite so long. On page 505 it says on click. So what happens now is when somebody clicks on one of these numbers in the customer uh, number column, then it will do what we're fixing to tell it to do. Alright, so we're going to click on build. Excellent. Macro builder is what you want, so say OK. I know you're loving these macros. And then it says that we want to click on OK. Now we're going to add a set temp bar, our set temp variable action. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to click on macro commands and double click on set temp var so we're going to set a temporary value we're going to name this cn so for customer number cn and in the expression is going to be bracket oops square bracket customer space number Look at that. And we can double click so there's less chance of me making a mistake. And then it says add the open form action. So what we wanted to do is open our forms, which happens to be underneath database objects. So we click on that and double click open form. Now, we did database objects at the beginning of the chapter. Alrighty then. So, the next thing is select the customer master form as a value for the form name. So, we'll click on the down arrow and choose customer master form. And the view argument is supposed to stay as form. And in the where condition, we're going to type that information in the third bullet point of number two 
in the bold print. Customer number equals tip vars. Do you see that? So we're going to type bracket customer number close bracket equals open bracket temp vars close bracket exclamation point open bracket cn for customer number and then close bracket and we want read only to be the value for the data mode so go to data mode and we want read only. Alrighty. And select dialog as the value for the window mode. So instead of normal, we are going to choose dialog. Alright. Now, we want to add the remove temp var action to the macro. So, at the very end, remember you want to remove the temporary variable, blah, variable. So slide down to remove temp var and double click that. All right, remove temp var, and in this case it is cn. So we created a temporary variable called customer number, which equals customer number, so we don't have to type out the full customer number now and we're going to open up customer master form when we click on a customer number they will be able to view the form and um, customer number when whatever the customer number equals the temporary variable cn it will be read only and the window mode will be dialog remove the temporary variable when you are done no, you don't have to do that right here, but it is a wise thing to do. So, now we're going to hit save. And cross your fingers, and we didn't get yelled at, so life is great. And we're going to hit the close button. Alrighty then. We're going to close the property sheet. Save the form. Yay and then close the form. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing to the book rep form. So, the first thing we want to do is we can follow the steps on page 504, steps 1, 2, and 3. So, this time instead of customer form, we're going to open up the book rep form. So, click on, double click on book rep close the panel, open the property sheet, select the book rep number column, the event on click, choose the build, macro builder, say OK, and then the first thing we want to do is set temp var so we'll slide down here to set temp var. And this time, the name is going to be BN for book rep number. We're doing exactly the same thing for this one. And it's going to equal, I am looking at figure 8-47, by the way. It makes life a little easier. Square bracket. And the expression is going to be book rep number and I'm going to double click that because life is better like that and then we want it to open form so we slide over here to open form and we want to choose book rep master form for the form name book rep master form the view is going to be form where condition is going to be bracket book rep number equals bracket temp var temp bars Make sure you put the S on the end, or it's not going to work. Exclamation point. 
bn, so open bracket, bn, which is what you named it here. All right, close the bracket, and we want this to be data mode of read only. And the window mode is dialog. All right, cool. So then we want to hit save and close. Close the property sheet. Save the form and close the form. All right, so that wasn't so bad. It's a little scary, but it's okay. You did it. Next, we're going to create a navigation form. So we want to make sure our navigation pane is open. And I'm on number one, page 506. Click on the navigation button. So under the Create tab, more navigation. Click on the down arrow. Now you have several different choices here. And in this case, we want to choose horizontal tabs. And that immediately opens up a navigation form. Now, the first thing we want to do is save this form as main menu. So we're going to click on the save. And we're going to name this main menu. Hmm. And then say OK. Then we want to change the name of the title of the form. So we click on navigation one time, and then we click on it again to get our cursor in there. And then we can change that to Bavant Publishing. All right. Oh. One of those days. All right, and then we want to hit save. Okay, turn the page. Now we get to add things to our form and all we have to do is drag them and drop them on top of these tabs. So the very first thing we're gonna add is the customer form. So we slide up here, we drop it, and we have customer. And notice it automatically added a new tab and as long as we are adding things to it, it will continue adding the new tabs. Next thing they want is the book rep form. So we slide up here and drop it. And now we have our book rep form. Then forms list. Notice these are all the things that we've made today during this lesson. And then we need report list. And let's go ahead and hit save real quick because it's been one of those kind of days. Click on forms list and it wants us to take the word list off of there. So we just click one more time, double click on list and backspace over it or however you want to delete it. It is absolutely cool. And do the same thing with reports. Click once, click twice. I double clicked and backspaced. All right, save again. And yours should look something like this. So now we have our customer form, book rep, straight up forms with our buttons we made and reports with all our macro stuff. Kind of cool, right? So we want to save. And then we're going to close the form. On page 511, we're going to create a data macro. So we want to open up the seminar offerings table in data sheet view. Seminar offerings table in data sheet views, which means you can just double click on it. And there is your data sheet view. Close field list if you got it. And then we want to close the navigation pane. And then we want to go to our table tools, table tab, all right? Now, we're going to click on the Before Change button. Before Change button. So this is what it looks like 
before the change. And we're going to create the macro that is shown in figure 8-56. So looking at the picture, we need an if statement. So let's double click on if. So notice that the book is giving us nothing, right? We have a picture, which is cool because each time we know a little more. Also notice that there are fewer things offered in the actions catalog. That is because of what we are doing and where we are doing it. And it's only going to offer things that we can do. So we're glad that it doesn't have the things in there that we can't do. All right, so looking at 8-56, we want to do a square bracket and type hours spent. And it gives it to us, and notice it is a data sheet, and that's a good thing. Hours spent minus total hours, so bracket and total hours. And here we go. Okay, hours spent minus total hours. Then we want to choose the set field. So come over here to data actions. This is totally new. No, you haven't done it yet, but it works the same way. So let's double click on set field. All right, not too scary. Well, maybe a little scary, but it works. So you're okay. Take a breath. It's all good. And for our name, we want hours spent. So bracket hours space spent and close our bracket. Okay, that is going to be the name of our set field. Now our value will be total hours. So bracket again, total space hours. Okay, total hours. Now we have an else if, right? So they don't tell you, but you've done this before. So we go to add else if. Excellent. And now we want to uh, do hours spent, so bracket hours spent, and I'm going to click on here, equals, oh, less than, hmm, I need better glasses, less than, which means the little side's on the left hand side, less than zero, all right. Then set field. So come over here to the new one. Double click set field. Okay. Set field. Name is hours spent. So bracket hours spent. And close bracket. All right. And make sure they're square ones. All right. And the value equals zero. Straight up zero. All right, so if hours spent minus total hours, then name of hours spent equals total hours. But if hours spent is less than zero, then hours spent equals zero. So it's not going to allow you to spend negative hours, right? Kind of hard to do negative hours, correct? And notice that there is the end diff, and we are good. Ours looks like the book, and so we hit save. Keep your fingers crossed. No beeping, life is grand. So we're gonna close that macro, and then save, and close the offering, seminar offerings table. All right, excellent. And that is that.